Hi, I'm Sabine Yaakov. This presentation is entitled DC Restorers, Circuits and Application. Let me say a few words about the background. Now, signals may lose their reference, that is the baseline or the zero level, and the DC restorer is a circuit that can correct back the signal so it will be referred to zero or any other reference level. Now, in this presentation, I'm going to say something about the need for restorers, some history about the evolution of these circuits, and then I'll talk about application in the analog and power electronics domains, and then I'll concentrate on some application of gate driver, MOSFET gate driver, using transformer coupled or capacitive coupled isolation. So some signals coming out of, say, sensors may have some offset. Uh, like a DC offset, which I'm showing here, which of course is not of interest, and in fact it, it's interfering, so there is a need to bring back the baseline to zero in this case. Another situation is that you have a sensor that is producing some signal, which, which are of low magnitude, and then you like to amplify them. Now, best way would be to amplify them through an AC amplifier, which is free of DC offset, and then, after this AC amplifier, you are getting the signal shifted because when passing through the capacitor, you get an AC signal. AC means that the area of the positive side is equal to the area of the negative portion. And therefore, there is actually a shift from the original value, so there is a need for DC restoring. Another example is a transformer. If you feed a signal which is referenced to zero, like a output of a gate driver, zero to some positive value, and then you have to pass it through a capacitor to avoid saturation of the transformer. And then at the output, you'll get an AC signal because only the AC is passing here. And then again, this area S1 is equal to S2, and of course, it depends on the duty cycle, there might be a shift one way or the other. So in all these cases, there is a need to restore the signal to a given reference, sometimes zero, or sometimes another reference level. So let me say something about the history of these circuits. Now actually, it goes back to the television era, analog television, and I'm showing here part of the DC restorer of a video signal of a analog video for a CRT, cathode ray tube. In these displays, there were actually lines going one after the other, that is horizontal lines, and in the line you have a video signal, which is the intensity, and then you have synchronizing pulses, look something like that. So here is the video signal, these are the synchronizing pulses, and since it is an AC, the whole thing is shifted. And as it turns out, you do have to clamp it to the negative side. Well, it's about negative side, we'll see it in a minute, in order to get the amplitude of the video in the right value. That is, the magnitude of the video is from actually this point to this point, and then here it's of course shifted, and then you have to shift it back. And the circuit that is shown here, which is based on a diode, a vacuum tube diode, here is the very fundamental DC restorer. We have a capacitor here, and then we have a diode. Here is the capacitor, and here is the diode. And the idea is as follows. If you have a signal which is an AC signal, or at least it's not referred to the minus side here, then by having this capacitor, you will be charging this capacitor to the magnitude of the minus value. So this will be charged here. And then you're going to add it to the positive. So here you get back the positive plus the negative, and this will be referred to zero. Of course, there is some uh, offset here due to the voltage drop of the diode. We'll talk about it later on. Here, it's something similar. This is an advanced uh, video, it's a color video, but the idea is again for an analog that you have to restore the so-called black level. This is the black 
portion and intensity goes up, so it's becoming uh, brighter and brighter as you go up. So there are a number of ways to restore the signal. I'm talking still about the video signal. This will be the simplest way to go. It will be clamped to the minus value here. So this will be like the zero. And then if you have a synchronizing signal, and the synchronizing signal should be actually this portion here, the black level, then you can actually use a switch to charge the capacitor at this instant and then of course this will become the reference level and this is actually the generic form of the video signal. So there are a number of ways to go. This is just history. Let's see what we can do with this uh, this here restore today. So let me start off with the very basics. Here is a DC restore, the capacitor. I'm feeling here a signal which has a negative portion to it. It's a minus one to five volt. This is the signal here at the input. Now at the output, I'm getting a the restored signal. This will be the plus and the minus combined. But in this case, due to the diode, I have an offset here of the voltage drop on the diode. During the operation, the capacitor is uh, this here charging, this is the capacitor current charging, and then discharging, charging, and discharging. And this is the capacitor voltage, it's holding the voltage, the difference between zero and the negative amplitude. Now here we have quite a bit of a droop because the capacitor is discharging during this time here. So by increasing the size of the capacitor, and I'm moving now to 10 microfarad, you see that uh, I'm minimizing the droop. The voltage of the capacitor now, the swing is much, much smaller, and it is holding the difference between zero and the negative side, plus the diode. And this is then the restored signal from this signal, which is, uh, has a minus uh, one volt in this example. Now the penalty of having a large capacitor is that you take longer time to stabilize. This is from zero. You see that uh, the capacitor is just uh, building up. So it takes a while depending on the capacitor and of course the total, the resistances in the circuit. Now one way to get rid of the voltage drop of the diode is to add here a reference. So you are adding actually or neutralizing the voltage drop of the diode. So here you see the restoration is very good, but you have to generate, of course, this uh, low voltage. So in this case, you can actually uh, get a very nice uh, restoration to zero. Another way to go is to use an active circuit that is a, you might have an active diode. In this case, we have an operational amplifier, and then we, have, we are sensing the line here and the diode goes to this line. So when the voltage here is negative, the amplifier produces a positive voltage, which is sort of feeding back the signal, bringing it to zero because this side here of the positive input is zero. So the amplifier is trying to keep zero between these two by actually injecting the current into this, actually it goes to the capacitor. So this is one way to go. Of course, uh, if the pulses of are of high frequency, you, then you have, of course, to have an amplifier of uh, a very large bandwidth. And for this particular amplifier, here is the simulation. Now I have here a signal plus minus one volt, minus one volt plus one volt. This is the input signal, and this is the restored signal. You see, we have very nice DC restoration of the baseline. And here I'm showing the output of the amplifier, which goes positive when this goes negative here in order to charge the capacitor and to bring the value here to zero. So let me add now some more information, more possibilities. And here I'm showing actually two things. First of all, I'm showing that you can actually get a DC voltage, not necessarily pulses. If you have another diode and a capacitor, then of course these uh, pulses are being uh, stored in the capacitor, the peak value, or 
about the peak value and you get the DC output. So this is a capacitor isolated power supply. The nice thing is that it can ride on any voltage, not necessarily zero, because the capacitor here is actually getting the difference of the voltages between the input and the output. So let's have a look at the waveform. This is now the input. I'm showing here a minus one plus five large duty cycle. This is the capacitor current. It's charging here, discharging here. This is the capacitor voltage. You see the capacitor is actually holding the difference here of the signal itself as well as the 100 volt. Here it is. So this is the average voltage and this is the ripple on the capacitor. And here we see the output. Well, it's zoomed, so uh, we see here the ripple, uh, but as you can see, the ripple is uh, very small. Of course, it depends on the size of this capacitor. So what we can do then with this circuit is to get a power supply, auxiliary power supply, riding some voltage level, and the capacitor is actually providing capacitive isolation. I'm moving now to a transformer isolated high side driver based on a DC restorer. What I'm showing here is a transformer, the primary, secondary. We have here a source of a gate drive. And then we have here a DC restorer. And I've added here a push-pull buffer to increase the current capability of the circuit. Of course, this buffer needs a power supply. So again, I'm supplying it with an extra diode here and a capacitor that is providing a stable supply for the buffer. Let me just emphasize that the average current required for the gate is rather low. We do need a momentary high current, which the transistor are providing and the capacitor is being able to provide while the average current is actually being fed through the transformer. And here are the waveform of this circuit. We have the input signal, again, 0 to 12 volt in this case. This is the voltage of the transformer at a secondary. Now, since the duty cycle is small, then of course the offset is rather small. It's probably like 1 volt, 1.5 volt. But still, after the DC restorer, we do get a pretty good zero level. And so we see here some of the effect due to the leakage inductance of the transformer. But for moderate frequency, say 20 kilohertz, 50 kilohertz, this solution could be okay. At a higher frequency, there might be a problem due to the leakage of the transformer. Another possible application of the DC restorer as a gate driver is for a static operation. That is, suppose you have a load here, it could be a, say, a relay or some other load. You need to drive it by DC, turn it on and off, and the load is referred to ground. So you need a floating transistor here with the floating drive. So again, uh, using a transformer, feeding here the pulses, and then using this as a power supply, as a DC power supply, by having the dial and the capacitor, we can generate a voltage here. And this, of course, will turn on the transistor. Unfortunately, the turn off is not that fast. It depends, of course, on the resistor that we have here, the 10K. So it's really for slow operation. It's not for a very fast operation. And here I'm showing some waveform. This is the gate. Okay, this is the drive. And here we turned it off. And this drop now is due to the time constant of the circuit. So the transistor is on until we get to the threshold. It's about here probably. And then the transistor is turned off. This is the output or the voltage across the load. Now another useful application of this DC restorer gate driver combination is cases in which you have to drive a transistor switching mode but you have a reference level at which the transistor is sitting on so i'm showing here a transistor that i'm supposed to toggle this is a current source and it does just to provide the load for the switching transistor and again there is a need to drive this uh, transistor by high frequency 
pulses of variable duty cycle, okay? And the whole thing sits on a DC level, okay? It's a DC level. So, again, the idea is very similar to what I've shown before. We have the capacitor, we have the DC, the DC restorer. Now I've added here the buffer, and here is the DC supply. Very important that this diode has to be referenced to this point where I like to have the zero. And here is the result. Again, it's a for short duty cycle. This is the input signal. This is the output signal after the DC restorer. And this is now the gate driver. Again, I have some delays here due to the internal resistance. Now this driver could be very useful in a circuit that I've described in an earlier video, which is an active balancing circuit for batteries, okay? And the, ba the balancing is done by switching capacitor between the batteries. So we have a capacitor which is switched between this battery and this one. Like this one, it's connected to the upper one and then connected to the lower one. By this, we can equalize the voltages of these batteries. Now, for this circuit, you need a floating power supply. Now, the nice thing is that the voltages here are pretty much constant because these are the battery voltages. So you can use this uh, approach that I've just shown. And here it is. We have two transistors, one an N channel, and this is the P channel. And then we have signals coming in through a capacitor. This is a DC restorer. This is used both as a diode and a zener for protection. Also, this one is a zener and a diode for protection. So when we have this positive voltage coming in, then you'll be feeding the gate. And during the negative, you'll actually discharge or recharge the capacitor. Now, on the negative part, you can use it to generate negative pulses for the P channel. So this is really very neat and very simple because you can drive all the transistors in this uh, array by a pair of drivers. So this brings me to the end of this presentation. I hope you found it of interest and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.